Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a mini vlog where I take you with me to a local comic book shop where I find some horror goodies. So let's get into it. Now I'm back from the trip and I found some good stuff that I'm excited to show you. I found books and movies, so let's start with the books. First I picked up this copy of The Omen 2, which is the sequel to The Omen. This follows Damien, who's a little bit older. I actually haven't seen the film, so I don't know much about it, but yeah, I have the first Omen book, which I still need to read, and this one I just couldn't resist. And then I found this one, The Omen, which I think is The Omen, is that 4? Armageddon 2000. I I don't know. I just couldn't resist it. It follows Damien again, the spawn of Satan. Um, no. In this one, Damien is dead. So I don't know about this one. It sounds crazy. I just love the cover and it's in, it's in pretty good condition. Then, continuing with the devil, the devil theme, I found this book, The Exorcist, The Strange Story Behind the Film. I'm really excited about this because I love The Exorcist and I know that the, the production of The Exorcist is infamous for being cursed. A lot of crazy things happened on the set and even director uh, William Friedkin, he had a little unconventional way of doing things. Pretty toxic. <laughs> so I am interested to see how truthful this story is and how juicy it is. I was really excited to find this. Then I found Stir of Echoes and this is the movie tie-in edition. So Stir of Echoes was actually a story written by Richard Matheson first before it was adapted into a film starring Kevin Bacon in the 90s. This follows a man who gets put under hypnosis by his sister-in-law and then when he wakes up he, start ha he starts having these horrific visions of this girl who's dead and he basically tries to figure out what she wants. I've heard that the book isn't as good as the film so I'm excited to read this and compare and then potentially do a book versus movie review on here. I was excited to find this. I wish it had Kevin Bacon on the cover, but it has him on the back, so you win some, you lose some. <laughs> then I found a copy of Roswell High, one of the Roswell books, and I think it might be the books that take place after the series ended, but I'm not sure. So I used to have a bunch of the Roswell High books, and they're, they were the books before the movies, so they're a little different. Th books before the show, so they're a little different than the show, but this one I think is directly tied to the show. This wasn't originally written. It wasn't an original book yet. What am I saying? I don't know. But yeah, I can't resist a good Roswell book. Roswell is centered on a group of teenage aliens who are living like humans undercover in Roswell, New Mexico, where the infamous alien crash happened. And they're basically running for their lives and trying to remain normal without being caught by the FBI. And there's a love interest involved. It's honestly one of the greatest teen dramas of all time with aliens. Then I found two copies of two different Fear Street books. Fear Street, The Prom Queen. I just love these freaking covers so much. This is a spring set story 
about a prom queen candidates that takes place at Shadyside Prom. There's a murder and then another and another and then the recipe recipe quickly turns to horror. Lizzie McVeigh realizes that someone is murdering the five prom queen candidates one by one and that she may be the next on the list. I love that these stories are just so fun. They're like little whodunits and they're usually pretty dark for Fear Street books. For books centered towards teenagers, they're pretty dark. Then I picked up The Good Night Kiss 2. I don't know if I have Good Night Kiss 1. I think I might. This is about vampires in a small resort town of Sandy Hollow. This looks like a romance novel. I love it. That's it for books. So we're moving into the DVDs I picked up which are all movies that I love. I just haven't, I didn't have them in my collection. So I picked up The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation, which is actually currently streaming on HBO Max right now. This one is not for everybody. A lot of people actually hate it. I love it because it's so bonkers and off the wall. It centers on a group of teens on prom night who they decide to leave their prom, they get into a wreck, and they meet up with the family who, I can't remember their name, and Matthew McConaughey is in this. He's insane. Leatherface is in it. He's unlike his usual self. He's very timid and submissive in this. And Renee Zellweger is the final girl who's, she's a pretty cool final girl. And I was excited to find this on DVD because I didn't, I, I know that there's one from I think Shout Factory. So yeah, this this one was in pretty good condition. I'm excited to add it to my collection. And then I picked up Halloween H2O, which I have on VHS. I love Halloween H2O. I think it was a perfect installment in the Halloween series. Might even like it a little better than Halloween 2018. It's centered 20 years after the first Halloween, and Jamie Lee Curtis reprises her role as Laurie Strode, and she's still traumatized and troubled by the events that happened to her on Halloween night in the 70s, and she's convinced that Michael is going to come back one day on Halloween, and he does. This also stars Josh Hartnett as her son, and... I love him in this. This was like his first movie and he's got the uncombed hair and he's just dreamy. And Michelle Williams from Dawson's Creek. It's just a fun ride and I love it so much. So glad to add the actual DVD in my collection and I like that it's orange. And lastly, I picked up Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. I surprisingly didn't own this one, but it's one of my favorites. I love Halloween Season of the Witch. I like that it's different from the other Halloween films and it doesn't have anything to do with Michael Myers. And I like that they were trying to start a new anthology type series with the Halloween franchise, but it didn't work out. This is centered on a man who teams up with this woman whose father was killed and uh they're investigating this mask maker in this weird california town and they find out that they have sinister plans for everyone on halloween night this one is super atmospheric creepy and weird and it has a theme song you'll never get out of your head this is one of my favorites it's a must watch every halloween and yeah I'm glad I finally own it. There you have it. That's everything I picked up today. It was a good little haul and it was a nice unexpected trip. I, I wasn't expecting to see this place. I saw it and I was like, oh, let me just go inside and see if they have anything horror related because it was mostly just comics, but they had, they had a lot of horror stuff. A lot of the Universal Monster stuff and the monsters and they had a section for horror comics. They just had so much. So I'll definitely be going back there but I'm excited about what I found. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little trip with me, this little come shop with me, and I hope you join me again. Hit subscribe if you liked that. Hit like if you liked it. I'll leave all my social links down below so you can connect with me on, on Instagram and we can talk about more books and stuff and horror movies. And thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye.